Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Deb Bryant. I'm the Marketing Manager at Avada. Thank you for tuning in today to this webcast on how to optimize your inventory replenishment strategy with Oracle Cloud. Presenting today, we have Kevin Martin, our VP of Sales and Solutions, who will provide a brief introduction to Avada, Ferguson Neal, Director of Integrated Business Planning in Avada, and one of our cloud solution architects, Venki Narayanan. And now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Kevin to talk to you a little bit about Avada, who we are, and what we do. Kevin? Thank you, Deb, for the introduction. I'm Kevin Martin, Vice President of Solutions with Avada. I will take the next couple minutes to share a brief introduction on Avada. Avada is a full-service Oracle partner and consultancy firm that provides services from strategic consulting to implementations for Oracle's on-premise and cloud-based applications. Our expertise expands into full ERP, enterprise resource planning capabilities, covering financials, procurement, manufacturing, and ordered cash, along with all of the supply chain management activities. Our typical clients range from small and medium-sized businesses to large global enterprise accounts, and are spread across all industry and pillars. They know to partner with Avada to improve their business processes, be it with supply chain, business process automation, or integrating multiple systems together. We help implement the full suite of Oracle applications while providing business process automation, road mapping, and management consulting across those applications. The slide currently being shown is just a quick view of some of our recent implementations and showing cross-industry solutions. Many of these are highlighted on our website at avada.com. Avada recently formed a strategic partnership with Calypso to offer a best-in-class full suite of solutions to our customers. Our expertise in supply chain and ERP, combined with Calypso's expertise in PLM and emerging technologies, brings the leading firm's knowledge and expertise together to support customer and Oracle growth. Together, we offer a wide range of tools and solutions across many industry verticals. Avada's eLink integration platform was developed to integrate legacy data between the client's data silos, third-party applications, or legacy ERP systems like JD Edwards, NetSuite, or SAP and the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Our express solutions are designed to provide a faster implementation or pre-built platform for your company to establish a cloud presence. We've also built several solutions that augment the cloud functionality specific to our clients' needs that improve productivity or automate tasks and look to incorporating robotic automated processes or IoT into those solutions as well. Lastly, we feel our approach on how we work with you is key to our success. From calls like this to offering a cloud readiness assessment, focusing on implementation strategies or other integration and solutions for your clients, it puts in motion the right discussions for creating a successful implementation or migration strategy that is based on standard use of the Oracle tools, our pre-built and accelerated solutions. And lastly, we do offer managed services that provide support and monitoring after the implementations are in place. Today's webinar will share some insights into how to use new features being released in the Oracle Demand Management applications to drive down inventory costs while maintaining or even improving customer service levels through the use of replenishment planning. With that, I'd like to bring on Ferguson Neal to introduce this topic. Thanks, Kevin, for that introduction, and um, let's get down to it. So today we're going to talk about replenishment planning, which um, really is a, a new feature that Oracle has added to demand management uh, in the cloud. And so we're going to review that, the over, overhead of that, and, uh, and we're also going to dig into some of the um, key features about replenishment planning, which is part of DM Cloud. Understand the difference between some classifications and segmentations. We're going to understand, uh, you know, how strategies and policies will drive and improve the health of your inventory and service levels. And then we'll recap with some um, benefits there. And this will predominantly be covered by myself and Binky. Binky, did I miss anything in that um, in that agenda there? Is that is that what we're covering today? That's right, Frank. That's a great uh, summary of agenda. All right. Terrific. So right off the bat, Vinky, we, we get a lot of clients who ask the questions, you know, we've got this new feature. Uh, for those who are in DM Cloud, Demand Management for Cloud, it's a subscription. And one of the benefits of the subscriptions is that you get quarterly updates. Some of the updates are small, and then, and then some of the features are significant. And last year, 
Oracle introduced this this feature called replenishment planning. And so we get a lot of, it does some neat things, but we get a lot of questions from our customer. Why is it in DM Cloud? Who should use it? How do I use it? What are the expected benefits from that? And so, Vicky, if, um, kind of to start us off here, uh, can you talk a little bit more about that, about replenishment planning from, a, from an overview perspective? Absolutely, Feg. Uh, replenishment planning cloud, it's on an overview, it, it primarily determines the best balance between customer service levels on inventory. And all we have is primarily is, uh, there is a conception which is getting forecasted from the demand management cloud perspective. And then we use replenishment planning on top of it to replenish the right quantities, the right time and all that, right? That's all replenishment planning is all about. And in the next slide, we can see what is it trying to address. Uh, basically, some of the typical pain points it is trying to address are a widely varying demand patterns where you have products that are highly volatile and highly intermittent and you have products that are uh, low intermittent. So you have these huge varying demand patterns and then you also have a differing inventory policies for each of them because some of the high class items needs a different safety stock and a replenishment policy. And again, a low class items needs a different safety stock and inventory policy. So we have these differing inventory policies. And then you have to deal with too many items and locations, uh, deal with hundreds and thousands of products, especially in spare parts manufacturing or, or uh, surgical and hospital supplies, right? And then Finally, you have a limited diagnosis, like planners have no clue where to start and there are no exception driven process in the first place. So these are some of the typical pain points that replenishment planning is trying to address. So in the next slide, I'll talk more about, you know, what, how does it address these features, right? So basically, uh, it provides a functionality called a segmentation where we can segment an item location combinations based on a, a fixed or a dynamic attributes. Like for example, you can specify lead time or, or, a, or a demand forecast or use these attributes to determine the, your segment groups, okay? And then you target them with a specific inventory policy by doing an inventory policy planning within the tool. And then once we set up all this, we can do an automated replenishment process. And then the best part after that is we will be quickly able to visualize and simulate the scenarios and see whatever process that we set up is working or not. And, and that's the good thing about the uh, replenishment planning cloud. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the next slide, we talk about who would be benefited from this, right? So some of the, uh, anybody who has a DM cloud obviously will get the replenishment planning uh, functionality as an add-on so that's uh, you know that, that's take um, that's a start but some of the key use cases for replenishment planning can be for healthcare industry primarily on the medical and surgical supplies and store level replenishment uh, industries that are dealing with store level replenishment and also the industries that are dealing with service parts and consumables uh, and dealing with hundreds and thousands of parts. Yeah, excellent. So kind of a recap there, uh, RP itself is really, um, it's for, for organizations that have a large catalog of items, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, SKUs or, or items in the catalog and have, want to be able to, to introduce segmentation and policies to manage the replenishment of those inventories. So we're gonna, so I, I think the next logical thing is, is, is to talk about the difference between inventory classifications and segmentations, uh, because that's gonna be a key part of replenishment planning. So we, we all know classifications, we've used this, it's been listed in, uh, in our ERP and in our inventory and, and management warehouse systems, and that's the traditional A, B, and Cs, right? We'll, uh, we'll We'll group things into A, B, and Cs either by size or location or activities or even value. And then we'll go through everything from our cycle counting to setting some policies around that. But it's it's not very dynamic in today's world, especially if you have a large catalog and a lot of forward locations where, where you're really concerned about service levels. So we look at segmentation, introducing the concept of segmentation in inventory. We've done this in marketing. And when we talk about segmentation, we're really looking at look, uh, uh, dissecting 
um, your inventory and, and looking at the items that fit into certain parameters, rather that be both high volume and high margin as an example, and then creating a set of parameters that are gonna maintain that replenishment plan and that service level that you have for your, for your customer base. An example of that would look like this. You look at the metrics up here on the top part of this chart, and what we have on the left is the margins. You go from a low margin to a high margin or even super high margin. And then on the on the bottom axis, we're looking at it is your activity level. So for items that have a high margin that are active every month of the calendar year, so they're active 12 cycles out of the year, you're, you're gonna look at those and those are, those are really our favorite products. We turn them a lot and we get a lot of margin from them. And in this particular example, you can see uh, there's a certain amount of items in each one of these quadrants. And we may select and decide to handle those with a different replenishment policy as we would for items that are perhaps at the other end of the chart that aren't as active or might not have the same margin. So as you see in the, the, the slide below us, uh, the bottom part of the slide are the ways we can have different inventory policies and we'll dig into that a little bit later. Now, Binky, this is a really dynamic way to manage replenishment and to manage your, your overall inventory strategy and there's just only so much time in a day. So how does replenishment planning itself, the application or the feature in DM Cloud, handle this in an automated fashion? Can you explain that to us? Sure, Fuck. that's a great question. So segment analysis is one of the key features of replenishment planning cloud. So the traditional way of classifying ABC is no longer valid in the sense that we are adding so many different attributes, whether it's a product or whether it is a, a customer, right? So we need to have a, a differentiation the way we want to segment uh, items and location. So that's exactly what the segment analysis does. So it provides, it identifies the parts of your supply chain with similar replenishment requirements based on a set of flexible rules uh, that you can use uh, a static attributes like cost, lead time, or product. Price or, or the dynamic attributes like, you know, my forward looking forecast or my backward looking history or then uh, any other custom attributes like, you know, if you want to bring in your sales forecast or marketing forecast. So use these set of attributes to actually decide, uh, you know, what sort of segment groups I want to create, you know, and then manage them by different plan runs. Like you can have your own uh, replenishment plans that are based on segments. Uh, and then in the next slide, I'll talk about uh, an example of how it, uh, you know, the, the process happens in the first place. So first, we identify a segment group uh, in the sense that okay, this is, this group is primarily based on the volume profile, and then you define the segment granularity, which means that how do you want to uh, create these groups? Is it at a higher level? like product category or corporate group level, or you want to do what you know, item and customer, the lower level, and then, and then define these segments. Or for example, I want a segment that's catered to high volume, high, high margin, and then I have a segment for medium volume, low margin. So define these segments, and also define the criteria for each of them. So uh, uh, based on the set of rules that I talked about. And then finally, execute the segmentation and review the results. So in the, in the next slide, I'll show an example of how this happens in the system, right? So what you see here is like four different segments, and then each of them has their own criteria based on the standard cost and demand value. And at the bottom screen, what you see is how it gets configured in the replenishment planning cloud. Um, so once this is configured and we run the process uh, as an output, you're gonna see uh, how the item and combination gets attached to each of these segments. For example, the item 001 and the location M1 has a so-and-so standard cost and shipment forecast, and, and, and they match both the criteria and then gets attached to the segment high cost and high volume, right? So once this is done, you'll be able to visualize the segment analysis. So for example, what you see here is the segmentation report, which has the segment details, and then it has the latest account, uh, and then the what is the previous count and what is added in the latest run. So again, a very important thing is this continuously evaluates what, what is the classification. Uh, 
especially for let, let's talk about you know the supplies medical supplies in terms of gloves and all that so due to covid situation currently you know you may have a huge volume uh, uh, and, and uh, it could be a high volume item at this point right but in the next one year or so probably once uh, you know it's all subsides it may go back to a low volume item but who is going to evaluate that but that's where the tool is there which is the segment uh, process which is going to continuously evaluate the condition and move that from a high volume uh, segment to a low volume segment automatically it, it all happens automatically and it happens periodically and that's the greatest part about it Terrific. So I think that's a, a clear way of if you've got tens of thousands of uh, items in your catalog and um, you need to keep an eye on this managing it, th th really it's impossible without a, a, a large team to look at it daily. Uh, utilizing replenishment planning is really the only way you can keep up if you're going to introduce segmentation into uh, your inventory policies and replenishment policies. Uh, good example there and, and a, a great graphics from uh, from the application itself. Um, so we really kind of covered a, a few things about segmentation and its use here, but really uh, would like to talk a little bit more. We get a lot of questions from our or from our clients about uh, strategies and policies and how they go about that to improve the health of their inventory and, and service level agreements. And it all starts with the basics. You know, why, you know, how do I maintain service levels and how do I calculate safety stocks? And um, if you if you look real deep uh, under the hood, so to speak, safety stock itself, there's several ways to calculate it. It can get confusing in a hurry. Um, you're trying to maintain, again, safety stock, you're trying to maintain the right amount of uh, safety stock so you can guarantee a service level to your customers, a fulfill rate. Um, but you also have to take into account where's all your inventory located? What's the lead times? What happens when those lead times change? Because your sourcing rules tell you you have alternative places to get materials from. So it gets back to the reorder point. So it can get complicated in a hurry, but it's important to understand the service level relationship and the, the safety stock calculation. So Vinky, um, with those things in mind, those two very important uh, aspects of inventory policy, how does the replenishment planning go about managing and utilizing those two aspects? Oh, another great question, folks. So yeah, the so safety stock calculation is another uh, comprehensive um, and, and uh, it has pro replenishment planning has provided a lot of flexible ways to calculate that so there are three three uh, methods uh, within the replenishment planning cloud so one that is based out of days of cover so where we can specify the number of days we want to cover the safety stock levels and then it could be based on uh, the forward looking demand or it could also be based on uh, your history and use that consumption information to calculate your safety stock uh, the other way of doing it is the service level based which is where, which is why RP is part of the VM cloud, where the statistical forecast error information is being used, and the target target safety uh, target service level that we enter is going to compute the safety stock quantity for us. And the best part is if the uh, if the data is a, a non intermittent data, it uses a normal distribution to calculate the safety stock. If it's a highly intermittent uh, uh, product, it will use the Poisson distribution to calculate the safety stock. Um, and then it also provides the user specified safety stock, uh, which, which can be imported and, and put into the system. So it provides these flexible methods. And in the next slide, I'm gonna show you how these safety stock policies gets attached to each of these segments that we talked about. Uh, for example, what we see here is, so one of the segment high cost, high volume, I'm trying to attach a safety stock policy here. So here, what I'm doing in the tool is basically going to the safety stock calculation and specifying what sort of calculation I want to have, whether it is days of cover or service level based, right? And then if it is a days of cover, I'm also going and entering what a number of days I want to do it, and then what is my days of cover basis. So again, I typically enter all this information at a segment level. Once we enter all this information, we will show how it gets, how these policy gets attached to the replenishment plan. Uh, so in the next slide, if you see what happens is, once these policy parameters, all the details are entered, it gets 
it gets assigned by the policy assignment set, which gets linked to the replenishment plan. So what happens is when the replenishment plan executes this information, it uses the safety stock policy and generates the safety stock and it will provide that, that output uh, where we can visualize you know, the policy effectiveness for all the different uh, 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 segments that we, we, we configured. Like for example, in this case, we're looking at the, all the different segments and visualize the policy effectiveness by having the projected balance and then the safety stock. Uh, uh, if, if you're looking at the, the, the current uh, the graph at the moment, uh, the dashboard, what tends to happen is we can see that the, the medium cost high volume is at the right hand where the safety stock is more, the projected available balance is more, which means that, oh, you know, probably we can do a lot better job than this and, and probably move them closer to the, to the rest of the segments, right? So it will provide that ease of, uh, in, uh, uh, to, to really assess their policy effectiveness. Uh, I hope I've uh, answered your question, Phil. It sure does, Vinky. And you know, we've we've been engaged uh, with uh, several of our clients. They ask us to come in and start the relationship off by uh, examining the health of their inventory. And so, it's not uncommon for us to to take a deep look at that. And safety stock, as you just described, is really just one of the classifications. So, on this this particular slide here, if I was able to illustrate this, and let me get my laser pointer out because there's a lot of detail in here, we talked about safety stock as just one of the things um, and replenishment we understand that but if when you look at inventory uh, from an analytical point of view is is we break it into these categories we've got dead and obsolete there there's no getting around it sooner or later when you have a large uh, catalog of items in inventory you're going to have items that eventually become dead and obsolete and there's only one thing to do and that's take a position of that and, and, and either donate or write it off or, or, or such uh, execute such as in kind like that there's also slow moving inventory now note that we make the distinction between dead and obsolete and slow moving uh, one is acceptable the other is not some people will use the term slob for slow moving and obsolete, and that's a misnomer. There is no such thing as slow moving and obsolete. It's either one or the other. Some organizations have to have certain items in their inventory for contractual reasons, and they may be slow moving. They may only have activity on that item once or twice during the year, but you're still going to need to maintain it. And then, of course, there's safety stock, which helps protect your service level, and the rest of your inventory is what you're replenishing on either a, a monthly or, or, or bi-monthly basis, depending on what your lead times are. So in this top part, the blue part, we're looking at these inventory values, the percentage targets. We come up with an assessment where you are in comparison to best in class for your industry come to an agreement on new targets and how do we optimize it. Another way of looking at that is by segmentation. In this particular example, we're looking at, you could either look at it by product families or by categories, by channels, by value. We just illustrated that earlier in the slides or by your gross margin return on inventory. And again, we're looking at how soon should you be cycling those and what are the opportunities to get to an optimized level. And we'll later on, Binky, we'll, we'll circle back and the impact by managing these policies, what's the impact can be for you both on your balance sheet and your income statement. So the question is, we talked just a little bit about this, but how would policies be maintained, Vinky, inside of, can you give us an illustration of how that's maintained inside of replenishment planning? Oh, great question, Fark. So uh, inventory policy planning is another key features of replenishment planning cloud. So the idea is primarily tailoring the replenishment calculations to a wide variety of demands, right? So uh, for example, uh, replenishment planning provides like um, multiple different policies like min max reorder point fixed order calendar and these can be uh, specified in units as well as in days uh, which is basically uh, helps to calculate the min max quantity so once the policy calculates this min max quantity once and then 
when the replenish plan, replenishment plan uses these policies, it's going to obey those uh, reorder points and min max and, and uh, provide the replenishments accordingly. And once that is done, we should be visual again use the uh, you know visualize the policy effectiveness, and also we should be able to quickly simulate change the scenarios and play around. Uh, in the next slide, I'm just going to talk about how it, it gets configured in the tool, similar to what we saw in the safety stock policy. Okay, so uh, I just want to show how the uh, you know the policy policy parameters gets uh, attached with the segment, right? So this is similar to how we plan the safety stock policy. So this is called the replenishment policy here. So what I've done here is I'm attaching one of the segment high cost, high volume. Uh, I'm setting up a replenishment policy and basically specifying whether it should be a min max or OP or fixed order. In this case, it's a min max, and then uh, setting up a policy OM as uh, either units or days. If it's a fixed order cycle, I'll go ahead and put the fixed order cycle calendar. So it provides, uh, and again, it also provides how the the maximum quantity gets calculated for each of this. It is based on the days of cover, or is there any other, uh, or based on the safety stock. So there are different calculations that are involved for how the policy gets calculated. So I have, I have just illustrated that here. So when it comes to min max, the minimum quantity is primarily computed by demand during lead time plus safety stock, and the maximum quantity will be the minimum quantity plus the order quantity or the economic order quantity. So similarly, uh, ROP reorder point has um, um, two different calculations, one that is based on order quantity and one that is based on economic order quantity. So these policy calculations are built into the tool. And once we attach these policies with the replenishment plan, uh, um, similar to uh, how we assign the safety stock policies, is the plan is going to run and provide the replenishments. Um, and then once that is done, we will be quickly able to review and monitor each of, uh, each of the replenishment outputs in these beautiful info tiles. So what you see here is uh, some of the info tiles that's been used for replenishment planning cloud. The first info tile, which is the policy execution, that primarily talks about, okay, the items and locations that have a stock or the items that you need to go and have a look at, you know, that's, that's the, the diagnosis and problem solving. So it gives you the, the items that you need to look into. And then the policy effectiveness shows your fulfillment rate across these segments, you know, um, and it's pretty good at the moment, which is great. And then the segment analysis, as I mentioned below, provides a report on each of the segmentation groups and how they are doing, what are the latest additions, what are the latest removals, so you can you can review all that information. Uh, the total inventory value provides a snapshot of the inventory dollars, right? And then the shipment forecast may provide the forecast uh, error uh, from the forecasting engine, which is part of the uh, uh, DM and RP cloud. Uh, so that's that's how uh, you know the policies gets attached and eventually gets you know uh, and then eventually part of the plan and then uh, the replenishment happens. So in addition to that, so uh, it it it, does, it, does, it doesn't stop there. So the other thing is now that I've implemented this policy, I really want to see if that policy is working. Right. That's why the plan performance and simulation comes into picture. So the idea of simulation is to identify these exceptions and uh, take some actions, right? So whether it is uh, looking at the fill rate uh, and see if the fill rate is good enough or looking at the stock out situation and see if we can rectify it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, sh uh, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of uh, these scenarios and see and show how effective the tool can be. Okay, in the first example, I'm going to talk about uh, how quickly uh, a simulation can be done at a segmentation level. So for here, the policy, I'm, I'm looking at a specific, uh, all these four segments, and I found out that the low cost, high volume segment has a, a, a lesser service uh, levels compared to the other ones. So basically, I'm going to do run some simulation, change the inventory policy and see if it's going to work. So, I'm going to go ahead, uh, go to my manage policy assignments and, and go to this segment called low cost, high volume and change my safety stock calculation from a days of cover to a service level based. And then I'm uh, going to enter my target service level percentage uh, and then quickly come to my uh, uh, dashboard and run the simulation. So here, what I'm primarily doing is I'm not even refreshing the data. I'm not generating a forecast. I'm merely 
recalculating my policy and and, cal and and calculating my replenishments because what I have done is just change the policy. And once that quickly runs, what is going to happen is uh, my policy effectiveness of now changed from 95 to 90, close to 98 percentage, which is my desired level. Okay, so again, this is something I have done at a segment level. So if I want to drill and go at a detail level, that can also be done. So I'm going to show another example how we can address the stockout situation of a specific item. Uh, so for this, what I do is again, I come to the dashboard, specifically the policy execution dashboard, and I'm, I'm looking at the same low cost, high volume segment and drill down to the items, uh, item location with stockouts, and then going to my uh, specific report, shortages by location, and then I quickly checking the first item which I want to fix. Uh, and again, I use the right, uh, right click to go to my replenishment workbench, which has got all the details uh, of my forecast, demand, sales orders, supplies, projected available balance. It also visually shows me the inventory sawtooth graph, which is a great visualization tool to look at what is my minimum quantity, what is my maximum quantity, what is my safety stock levels, what is my beginning inventory position, and then the projected available balance, everything. And then the tool also provides the, the, the dates where my projected available balance is negative. So it indicates there is a there is a situation and I need to address it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simply go and say, okay, the minimum and the maximum quantity is not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and change my minimum and maximum quantity and see if that salvages the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and change the minimum and maximum quantity and then quickly run a simulation. In this case, all I'm doing is I'm not even changing the policy. I'm just making an exception to this item and see if that really works. If that works, I go back and change for my entire segmentation. So that's the idea. So I'm going to quickly run the replenishment for this on a crunch, and then immediately I can see, oh, okay, the situation is resolved. I no longer have a negative projected available balance in the future. This is good. And so these are some of the great, uh, these are some of the great uh, features that, uh, you know, replenishment planning uh, provides with respect to simulation. Uh, I hope I've answered your question, Ferg. Well, that was a, a terrific uh, quick run through. I know it's just uh, one of the many features that are inside of replenishment planning, but it, it's a great way for us to illustrate how your planning team go through and drive simulations and without the automation without the integration inside of the oracle ecosystem it's just impossible to do that on a daily event i think that's the part we wanted to share with the in the webcast today on the next slide you know vinky we talked about policies we gave an example of what what, what people are really trying to drive is and that is What's the benefit to us? You know, what do we see uh, not only in ease and, and, and better visibility, but if we execute to a plan better, what does that mean to us financially? And so the slide that follows this is kind of a, um, a sample of where we populated at the end of one of our diagnostics, what some of the possibilities might be. And so in the top part, in the blue section there, we talked about the traditional classifications. We gave an example of that earlier in the webcast. In the bottom, we simply went by the segmentation using it by these product fans. Families. And so looking at the targets, the assessments, the improvement targets that we came to an agreement with the client and what that might mean, the green section tells you what the financial impact would be. In other words, if you optimize your inventory, you're going to get savings in two categories. It's important to understand that. In this example, the savings off your balance sheet or a one-time improvement of freeing up working capital would range between three and a half to six point two million dollars right now if you maintain that if you maintain those good habits and you maintain those policies you're also going to get the repeat benefit off of your PL, your income statement and that's in between 350 to six hundred and twenty thousand dollars and that's just introducing what we felt were very conservative improvements inside of policies maintaining your inventory health uh, at the same time of maintaining a service level agreement so when we hear about best in class companies who drive up their service level targets they're doing so without investing or out driving up costs and in fact they can do so by lowering sometimes 
their overall cost. They can free up working capital, and by freeing up working capital and executing better, they get better results in their, on their income statement. So just wanted to share that with you. These are results from diagnostics we've done, and you get these results by maintaining policies in an automated and integrated planning system, like replenishment planning, which is part of DM Cloud. Vicky, on the next slide, I think we kind of summarize this up. You want to uh, tell us what we just saw from the business benefits here. Absolutely, Frank. So some of the key business benefits of replenishment planning, Claude, as you talked about, is primarily maintaining the optimum inventory levels to meet customer service targets at the lowest cost by doing a trade-off, right? And then use automated process to maintain inventory policy parameters. So now all we are doing is we are setting up uh, a segmentation and then setting up the policies and then the policies drive the replenishment. So it's all the automated process. And then monitor and predict the performance of inventory policy parameters. That's again, how do you monitor and predict it? So we have these dashboards which provides all the different uh, information to monitor the progress. And also it also provides us the simulation to predict the performance. Like if you want to change policies, if you want to change the, the replenishment uh, strategies, can all be simulated, right? And then eventually plan replenishments for large number of item locations by managing replenishment policies. Again, very useful, especially when you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of product where you can manage things by exceptions. You don't have to, go each by each by each item. So that pretty much summarizes the business benefits of Hoppies. Uh, the next slide, we can talk about the key takeaways. Uh, again, so what it does, it's enable demand-driven replenishment, right? So the, the replenishment planning cloud functionality is embedded to the DM demand management cloud. So it, it pretty much anticipate the changes because of the forecasting engine. You know, use that to drive uh, your segmentation and then eventually your policies and eventually your replenishments. So it tailors inventory policies to demand segments. It simulate and resolve replenishment issues. And the best part is it automate continuous replenishment process. And from the from the service level, again, uh, um, it automates replenishment based on service level targets, and then the inventory policies drive overall cost down, improve service level. How it improves service level? Because we have an option to see the progress every time when we, uh, when we review and monitor this, and there is a scope to run simulation and change if needed, right? And then monitor and predict the performance of these inventory policies, which I just talked about. Uh, uh, Phil, do you want to talk about the financial impact? Yeah, absolutely. We the One of the other, the last key takeaway we want from the webcast today is, is, um, is the financial impact by implementing these policies through uh, replenishment planning. And so there's some economic games there. And by utilizing and focusing on segmentation, you're going to see it in your balance sheet. You're going to free up working capital. And when you maintain those those good behaviors and, and policies, you're going to get a return on that through your P&L. So um, you'll see it in both directions there, uh, quite dynamic. And so those were the key takeaways we uh, we wanted to share with you today. Um, Deborah, at this point, we're going to turn it back over to you. I know a lot of folks are going to ask questions, how to get engaged, how do they follow up from here? So rather you, um, you're managing your demand and replenishment out of a spreadsheet or you're on an old uh, on-prem technology, or you've already made the investment in the cloud, but you haven't yet implemented a replenishment planning. There's a lot of ways to start. So, Deb, I'll turn it back over to you, and you can explain a little more about that. Thanks so much, Ferguson. Before closing, I wanted to let you know that Avada does offer a free cloud readiness consultation. If you're interested in cloud migration for your organization and you're not sure where to start, you can contact us at connect at avada.com or visit our website to learn more. On behalf of all of us here at Avada, we thank you for tuning in and we invite you to connect with us if you have questions about the content presented today. I wanna to thank our presenters today for preparing and presenting this information. Please follow us on social media to stay informed in our upcoming webinars and events. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day.